Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I'm Prateek Gauri. I'm the founder and CEO of FIRE. Um, so I'm here to talk about building a decentralized internet. Um, so um, about the same time last year, um, it was a cold Saturday evening, uh, when I, along with one of my other very good friends and also now my co-founder in FIRE, uh, we were brainstorming on how the internet has evolved. We went back in time to 1991, where it made us remember a quote or remember an uh, article from the New York Times which said there is a new fad in the market called the internet. We all know what happened um, in the late 2000s when the internet took everybody by storm. We already know what happened after it when social media came into existence and now we are in the era of Web3 and blockchain. We decided to build a company in the blockchain space. We decided to build a company called FIRE, which stands for the Fifth Industrial Revolution, an idea that I've been promoting for more than a decade, to prove the thesis that you can actually make more money if you do more good to the world. Fast forward, it's been about 14, 15 months in the journey. We've become one of the world's fastest billion dollar unicorns. We hit that in 11 months, one of the first Indian companies to do so in the blockchain Web3 spaces. Um, but I'm not here to talk about what exactly happened in those 11 months or what we did. I'm here to talk about what can you take back, whoever is listening to the talk, how can you enter the Web3 space and how you can also curate a future for yourselves similar to the one that I managed to create. First and foremost, I'd like to start with the idea. The idea that if you align sustainability with profitability, there are higher chances of you making more money. There are higher chances that you will succeed as a business. Before I come to Web3, let me take you back in time. I think I already started my talk about Web1. Let me tell you what, what happened in Web1. So Web1 was internet. Internet basically was a read-only mechanism. So you could, you could consume your information but you, could, you cannot interact with the information. So it was just consumption of information. Google, Yahoo, Netscape, there were a lot of companies that were created in Web1. Google obviously ended up becoming one of the biggest companies in Web1, and you know what happened uh, in the late 2000s when Google became one of the biggest companies in the world. Fast forward, if I take you through the journey of Web2, it was more about read and write. So Web1 was just read, Web2 was read and write. It was a way to engage more with the audience, it was a way to engage more with the consumers, it was a way to bring people together where they could not only read, but they can also write and talk to each other. We all know what Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp has done to our lives. It's become a factor which we can't avoid now. So you know how Web2 became such a huge phenomena. Any company that was started in Web2, which ended up becoming big, obviously became multi, multi-billion dollar companies, Facebook being one biggest uh, piece. So Web1 was basically ruled by Google. Web2 was pretty much dominated by um, Facebook. A Lot of my friends started Web2 companies around 2008, 2010, 2011, 2012. They're now multi-billion dollar companies. Now has come the time to enter Web3. What is Web3? It is about read, write, and own. What does that mean? Through Web2 and social media, social media influencer has become a noun, but not just a verb. But now there's still if any content that a social media influencer or any of you create, you don't end up making money on your content. You don't own your content. Rather, there's a central authority which owns your content and makes money on your content. In Web3, it's about read, write, and own, which means you can own your data, you can own your finances, you can own your content, you can co-create it together, and you can monetize it. That's why it's the next big thing. It's also called decentralization, where no central authority has the power to control your life. You curate your own life. I am an, a little old millennial, so I've seen the transition from Web1 to Web2 to Web3. But a lot of you, and a lot of you listening to the talk, would be younger Gen Z people who might just 
enter Web3. Let me tell you something. Web3, you have the ability to build billion dollar companies by creating impact on the world and you can control your own life. You can curate your own future. You can curate the way data moves. You can curate the way finance moves. That's why Web3 is the next big thing and that's why I urge you all to enter Web3 and enter this movement. But here I'm not here to tell you what just Web3 is because you can obviously gain that information on the internet. I'm here also to tell you that how to enter the space. And how to enter the space, there's something called dApps, which is decentralized applications. Decentralized application is a digital program which is built on a layer one blockchain. So Fire, the company that I've built, for instance, is a layer one blockchain, which basically means it's like infrastructure of Web3. It's like Google of Web3. Anybody, and anybody can actually end up creating a decentralized application on top of a layer one blockchain which means you have the ability to create a digital program, but the difference is it's going to be owned by you. It's going to be owned by you whether it's data or whether it's finance. You have the ability to manage your own audience, you control your own content, and you control the finances of it, which never happened in Web2. How do you make a decentralized application is very simple. You basically need to learn how to, know, uh, how to learn how to code a smart contract and you can actually enter the space. We started a Web3 digital university where we're getting Web2 developers to learn Web3. We're training them and then hiring them in fire. But of course, you can, you can Google it and you'll find a lot of, lot of information on the internet. And I, I, I urge you all to read more about decentralized applications. The third piece that I want to come here, once you've built it, how would the future look like? We all know that we are entering the metaverse. We all know we are entering virtual reality where we have the ability to monetize every activity we do. We have the ability to monetize even if we play games, if we, write, if we read newspapers, anything can be monetized in the era of Web3. What we've done in Fire, for instance, is created a layer one blockchain infrastructure where we have changed the consensus mechanism and it's a for benefit movement. So we are ideally trying to transition the world from for profit to for benefit when hundreds and thousands of people end up building decentralized applications on top of it, our idea will actually come to fruition where we will want to prove the messaging at a very large scale that you can actually make more money if you do more good to the world and that sustainability will define profitability in the future. If you look at the valuation of Tesla or any of the electric vehicle companies or any companies which is working in the social um, uh, impact space, you've seen the valuation skyrocket, specifically, especially during COVID and after COVID. People have started to realize the importance of health, importance of edutech, importance of climate tech, all aligned to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. What does the future hold for you? There are three pieces to it. One is, of course, you need to learn what Web3 is. Most of the information is available on the internet. One beautiful piece which I've observed by building a company in this space is there is democratization of opportunities, democratization of, of talent. What I mean by that is this is the only space when nobody cares where you went to school, where you, went, where you got your education from. We have about 125 employees right now and most of the employees we hired, we never even checked their educational degree. And the reason is, you can be educated anywhere in the world from any school or college. There is no formal education on Web3, which means it's an open canvas. You can basically write your own growth story. So that's the kind of opportunity I'm talking about, about curating your own future, which definitely is going to be a lot, very, very abundant if you focus on impact. So that's my first point is to read more on Web3. That's what the future looks like. Second, I mentioned that you need to learn how to build a decentralized application, which is very, very important if you want to monetize your knowledge. Third, if you can link sustainability to profitability, which means if you can learn more about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So there are 17 global goals of sustainable development. SDG3, for, for instance, stands for health tech. SDG4 stands for quality education, SDG5 stands for gender equality, SDG6 stands for clean water and sanitation, SDG13 stands for energy, 
SDG 17 stands for partnership, so on and so forth. But if you can kind of learn more about it, you learn the language of social impact. The reason I'm telling you to do it is because sustainability is going to start defining profitability. So you need to learn what sustainability is all about. People often confuse that sustainability is often linked to climate. They think if you are carbon neutral, you're, you're sustainable, but that's not the only piece. Until you have 50% women in your workforce, you can never be sustainable. And that's just one example. Until you have sanitation facilities for everybody, you can never be sustainable. That's the second example, and there are many more. So until you accomplish all the 17 global goals of sustainable development, which, by the way, 193 nations have already signed up to achieve, you cannot be sustainable. If you can apply these three pieces in your life, which is learning more about Web3, building decentralized applications, and linking sustainability to profitability, you can curate your own future. I'm here to invite you to be a part of a Web3 sustainable revolution. Entrepreneurship is going to be the way it's going to be led. I urge you all, specifically the younger people, to become entrepreneurs in this space. There are going to be lots and lots and lots of unicorns like ourselves, a lot of billion dollar companies which are focusing on impact that are going to be created. It's never been so easy to do it. There are only three pieces that you require to actually end up achieving that. The first, so this is the only space where people often used to confuse capital to financial capital. If you start a startup in a Web2, and I've launched a bunch of startups in Web2, people often used to talk about funding. People often spoke about ideas not being able to get funded. This is the only space where the, the, there, there are dearth of ideas, but no dearth of money. What people lack is technical expertise. That's why I'm urging you to learn the space, understand the space, understand how a DAP is built, understand what the blockchain is, under, understand how it functions, and if you kind of do it, and then hire a good team in place. In fact, a lot of college kids can actually collaborate to launch a company. It's become easier than ever in Web3 to launch a company. It's just one white paper that you need to start which is about the idea, which we wrote in August of 2021. Fast forward in 11 months, we became a billion dollar company. So you can imagine the speed that is possible in this space. As long as you're innovative, as long as you have a good team in place, as long as you have a very, very good community who mobilizes your idea, like what I'm trying to urge you to do now, join the bandwagon of the fifth industrial revolution, join the bandwagon of a Web3 revolution, as long as you can do all of these three and put in relationship capital and human capital together, access to financial capital in Web3 is very easy. So you, you'll never have a dearth of money to be funded in this space. So that's more about it. I would love to in, involve you in joining our mission in building a sustainable blockchain. Um, and, and thank you, Jayhind.